Okay, we're going to draw our dodecahedron, which is drawing a polyhedra using 12 pentagons. So it's considered a platonic solid. So we're going to look at using Rhino to draw this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a polygon. Okay, so I'm going to click on the polygon button, and I'm going to make sure that my number of sides is set to 5 for the pentagon. And I want to use edge, and this is just so I can, and I'm going to turn on my grid snap, just so I can make that bottom edge a particular size. My grid set up to be 10 foot square, so this is 10 feet in length. Okay. And I'm going to bring out my layers my layers panel. I can close my properties for now. And I'm going to make a new layer called curves because we're going to turn this into surfaces and then we're going to turn it into a poly surface and then we're going to turn it into a mesh for 3D printing because that's going to be our first goal for 3D output. So here's curves. I'll select that make sure that it goes on my curves layer okay now the key to drawing a polyhedra is knowing the dihedral angle and the dihedral angle is the angle between two planes so the angle be between this xy plane of this pentagon and the next side and that you can get from many sources. We are using the polyhedra primer to find out that information. And in our case, the dihedral angle is 116 degrees, 34 minutes. So this introduces us to the 3D rotate command in Rhino. So let's walk through this. I'm going to start to type in rotate and I'm going to choose Rotate 3D. The object that I'm going to rotate is the pentagon, so I select that, press Enter. My start axis of rotation, this is something, some, is something that you have to get used to, but I always know which way to set this up so that I'm rotating in a positive angle. So if I click this as the start of my axis, and this as the end of my axis, then it wants my angle or first reference point. Now it's important throughout this that you're copying. This is where you might run into trouble. I always forget to press copy. So I'm going to press copy so it makes a copy. And my angle is going to be 116, 116D for degrees, and 34 minutes. And I'm going to copy that to the clipboard because I'm going to use that a whole bunch of times. So control C, enter. And then it still wants to, to do multiple copies for the rotation. Uh, I'm just going to hit the escape key. So that's one edge. So now I can do my 3D rotate again along this edge. And this might help. I always picture myself standing outside of this pentagon, looking at the sides that I'm going to rotate. So let's look right here. Let's look at this side. Pretend you're standing outside of it, looking back at it, at this three-dimensional shape. You want to have positive x for your axis rotation to the right, which is this way, to the right. So what does that mean? When I do a rotate 3D, and it is asking me for the object to rotate, enter, start axis, start of axis rotation, I always go left to right. And then my angle of rotation will be positive. I need to click on copy, and I can paste that angle in. Okay, there you go. Hit enter. Okay. So let's just do, if, if I consider this the bottom, this is a side, let's do this side and then we can mirror it over. 
So we'll go through this rotate 3D one more time. So remember, my start axis, I will go from left to right. So rotate 3D, left, right. right. Click on copy, copy and paste my angle, and then hit escape. I always, I always orbit my view to get back to the bottom, okay, along this x-axis here, along this red axis line. You see my x-axis here. I always orientate myself back to that view. So now I can select using the shift key, I can select both of these pentagons, and now we can look at the mirror command. Type in mirror, enter. Now, I need, if I start from this side, I'm okay, but I always like to turn on my midpoint snap. So I'm going to turn off the grid snap, put on my midpoint snap, and go from the midpoint of here. That's a knot. That happens to be a knot. That could also be an endpoint. Okay, now I have this basket, this basket made out of pentagons. So I'm, I'm halfway to my platonic solid. So now I can introduce us to the orient command using three points. Because in one step, we can flip and rotate the bottom basket to the top to complete our shape. So what I'll do is I'll make a selection of all of the pentagons. Okay. And I'm going to start to type in orient three point. And copy needs to be yes. Okay, it wants three points, so I'm going to pick one, two, three. And then I'm going to reverse that to fill in this void. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay, and now I have my, if I deselect, we can see that a little better. Now I have my platonic solid, my dodecahedron. So we have the curves, and our output, we're going to use a 3D printer, so we eventually we need a solid, which is just a watertight container. So we, we start this process by first creating planar surfaces. So let's rename layer 2. I'm going to call that surfaces. I'm going to select everything and type in the command planar surface. I'm going to turn my viewport to shaded by clicking on this shaded sphere with the grid behind it. By default, it put the, the surfaces on the default layer because that was current. Okay, so this is where we'll start to talk about selection filters, which are really important inside of Rhino. If you just start to type in SEL, you'll see you have a selection filter for everything. If you want to select only all the dimensions, if you want to select all the curves. In this case, if I want to select all of my surfaces, I would go down to select surface, and that selects only my surfaces, 12 surfaces added to the selection. So those are my 12 sides of the dodecahedron. Now, if I go to my properties panel, I can change that to the layer surfaces. Okay. So there we have that. Now, if I click on one of these, and I go to details, this is a surface. Next step is to join all 12 surfaces together. You can type in SEL, SRF. I like this toolbar very much. If I hold on my light bulb, I have a visibility. Okay. <clears throat> so, Let's say now I only want to see my surfaces and I want to hide everything else. 
there is a invert selection and hide objects. So only my surfaces are selected. To select all the curves and hide them, I can pick that button. So now I only have surfaces. So if I make a selection here of the surfaces, I can type join, enter, 12 surfaces joined into one closed poly surface. That I like. That means I have a watertight object. And if I go to details, here we see poly surface. So one surface is considered a surface. Multiple surfaces are considered a poly surface. And then when you close them all together, it's considered a solid. And that's just Rhino terminology. So now to 3D print, we need this to be a mesh. So let's take layer three and we'll rename it mesh. And we can use the mesh command. So if I select, now this is one object now. If I select that one poly surface, I can type in the command mesh, enter. Doesn't matter when I hit preview, let's see, fewer polygons, preview doesn't really change because it's not it's not complex geometry so in this case it doesn't really matter click OK type SEL mesh this time select my mesh change that to the layer mesh how about invert selection and hide objects again so oh, I still have my poly surface there Type and hide. Okay, so that's so that's a little tricky trying to figure out. So right now, how many objects do I have? One mesh. Okay, so pay attention to that. One mesh. So there's my mesh, and that's what I would export to an STL, which we went over that in the class one tutorial, and I can 3D print this dodecahedra. Before I export it to an STL, it's important that I check the mesh. And we can introduce one more toolbar here. And if I go up to the main menu, Tools, Toolbar Layout, I can look for Geometry Fix. So this is something we're going to use a lot in the upcoming classes. And this button right here with the check mark, there's other check objects and you can do details on a mesh, but this is what we're looking for. Check mesh objects for errors. Click that, select my mesh, enter, and here we go. This is a good mesh. Most important thing here is that we don't have any naked edges. This means it's watertight. So this object is ready to export out to the 3D printer and here it says closed polygon mesh. Okay, that's it.